Hi, it's Paul from Firelight. Tonight we're going to go through the graphical user interface of our new FTV 640 thermal imager. We're also going to do with the power up phase for those that have just done a new installation. Right, if you've purchased the FTV 640 and plan to run it off the fire stick, we've got this clever little power box that allows independent switching between the camera and the visible light source. When you get the power module for the FTV 640, it comes with its own independent switch. You swap that switch on the fire stick handle for the one that comes with the power module. And the original switch is used to turn the console and the camera on. I put my switch down on the dash so I don't have any use in switching. So when I want to start operating the thermal imager, I hit the button. It'll turn the thermal camera on. Now we're going to log into the tablet. Um, all of the tablets are shipped with the same password. It's 1234. And now we'll log in and check if the Wi-Fi connection's been made. There we go. Right, once we've launched the tablet, we can drag down the settings menu and just check that we've got a Wi-Fi connection with the FTV 640. Typically after powering up the module, it takes about 60 to 90 seconds to make an automatic connection. The tablets are actually set from the factory to auto connect. Um, be patient, it is about 60 to 90 seconds for connection to be made. All right, the bottom left of the screen is the icon to launch the FTV 640 app. One touch, take you straight into the application. Um, the menus can be a little bit intimidating to start with. We'll go through all the features. The, the first feature is all of the control systems um, for a traditional thermal camera here on the right. They can fold in and out with a push of that button um, to give you full screen view. The left hand side, we have a frequent used hotkeys. Now we can toggle black hot and white hot seems to be the most favored palettes that people use. So we put a quick toggle that sits on the front screen where you can toggle between white hot and black hot in one quick touch. Um, the non-uniform correction and the refresh. Now the refresh um, integrates the non-uniform correction with a video sync and we'll talk more about video syncing later. So one quick push of that button and you'll get a, a quick reset of the feed. It's recalibrated the thermal imager. Now the next two buttons at the bottom uh, for capturing any events that are happening, we thought in the field if something happens it tends to happen fairly quickly and you don't have a lot of time to fumble through a complex menu structure. So video recording is very simple. One touch for on, it'll record for as long as you want. Another touch for off and you can repeat that numerous times. Same thing with still capture. If you just want to capture single images, one quick touch and they'll be taken straight to the gallery. Now with video record, we come back to the menu. All of the video is actually stored in the thermal imager itself. And what we need to do after a while is just to sync it back to the tablet. And what it'll do is it'll transfer the image from the camera and save it into your download video files on the tablet itself. There we go. It's all done. Now we'll go through some of the principal settings on the system. We'll start with um, video sync. That's just a single point video sync. Unlike the non-uniform correction and video sync, this just purely resyncs the feed. We stream at you know, 150 megabits per second, but from time to time, you can actually get in live streaming a, an actual lag um, or a frame dropout. And this has been a frustration from a, a number of users of thermal images. Uh, we put in the system a quick reset, um, which literally is just one push of the button and about one and a half seconds, and it'll resync your frame to take any accumulative lag um, most thermal systems, you have to simply restart them, um, which is terribly frustrating. Now, we've also included stadiomatic range finding. So we've got an MOA reticle, which you can turn on and off with a single push. The, the reticle brightness can be adjusted down the bottom. Now, this toggle here is simply plus and minus to change the brightness, and you can dull it out to almost invisible, and of course, right up to max. Now, image brightness can either be manual or automatic. If you stick it to manual, Likewise, you adjust with the positive and negative. Gain is similar. You can go automatic gain, which most people use. Um, gain simply deals with, um, um, with temperature differentials. As your temperatures get a little bit closer together, you tend to have more gain. But for most people, it's better just to run with it automatic. DDE is similar to a traditional digital camera. Um, it's digital detail enhancement. So it'll help sharpen up the images or the edges of the images um, that you're producing. Uh, a filter is a classical digital filter. Now we've got a lot of other palettes. Some people like the other colors. We've got red, green, and we'll give you a quick demo of some of those. All the, all the fancy color ones. Back to black hot or white hot, which we can toggle over there to push of a button. 
Now zoom, we can zoom up and down in, in increments of 0.5. Typically you tend to run between 1 and 1.5. The image gets a bit coarse as you get up on the digital images. So I find between 1 and 1.5 to be adequate for most people. Right, we've just flicked around to a hill about 1.2 kilometres away. We just pinged it with a laser. It's, it's of that order. And just a couple of points I'd like to make in wrapping up. Um, the first one is non-uniform correction. The FTV system is set to automatic to recalibrate itself as required. Um, during startup, the temperature camera is uh, the temperature of the camera is actually rising, and it'll force a recalibration when it's required. It'll do it more frequently just after startup and become less frequent the more you use it. It's not the Wi-Fi freezing; it's just simply a forced recalibration. Typically, it takes between quarter and a half of a second, and the live feed will continue. Yeah. After startup, or before you actually begin to use the system, what I prefer to do is just to hit the video sync button to make sure that all of the lag is removed. We just give one touch, takes a split second, and then just remove your remote control handle to make sure there's no lag there. If there is, make sure that you've hit the button properly, and you'll see that it actually moves in unison. What we'd encourage you to do when you get your FTV640 is to get into the field and play with it, um, both day and night. Play with the settings. There's nothing you can break on it. Um, and the best way to master these systems is just to spend some time playing with the settings and work out what works for you, same with colour palettes. Um, the design team and the manufacturing team that have built uh, FTV640 are all located in Adelaide, so your technical support is local, and if you have any questions, by all means, give us a call.